everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Woodmere Estate Revival. This evening, I'm working in the pool house, and I want to talk to you guys about the installation of an automatic water fill system on our pool. Now, we had this installed last year, and it worked like a champ, but we had to dis, uh, disassemble the whole system earlier this year when we redid the pool house. We had to take all the equipment out and uh, disconnect everything. So tonight I'm working on getting that thing reconnected so we can get back to monitoring the water level on our pool. Let me show you the basic components and then how we're going to get this thing hooked up. We'll get it back together and uh, get it operating tonight so you guys can see how it works. So this is the Jandy automatic water fill system, also known as the Levelor water fill system. And this is the control panel. And it's got three lights on it here. It's got a power light, a sensor light, and a filling light. And the filling, it lights up when you think it would. When it's uh, sensed that it's low on water, it will kick in and this will uh, light up there to let you know that it is actively filling. So we've got uh, our hookups here and you can operate it on 110 or 220. And if you do the 220, you follow the diagram one way. If you do the 110, you follow it another way. It's all spelled out there for you so you don't screw that up. Um, to hook it up to 110, you pair these two wires together. This goes to the white, this goes to the black, and the ground has its own wire. And then we've got our hookups. These are the two green wires coming out of here. These go to the sensor. So those hook up over here and then come out the bottom and go to the sensor. And I'm just going to hook those up. I'm going to drop them down, go across the ground and hook them up over here. Uh, but at some point, I want to go ahead and put them in the conduit. I'm gonna do some new wires and come out, do some conduit and go up and over the header here, just like I've done with some of this other stuff. You can see the water line, how it goes across the header. And then that drops down and connects over here. So these two wires, and that goes to our solenoid. And that's what activates the water fill system. So the three quarter inch water line comes in over here on this side of the solenoid and then it uh, is activated by this solenoid and then that fills into your water return and goes back into the pool. This is the sensor wire and again I've just got it the conduit dead ended here uh, but I'm going to extend that at some point and again kind of bring it up and over and get all this stuff kind of neat and organized but for now I just want to go ahead and get it hooked back up. We're going on vacation next week so I want to make sure that it's filling the pool the whole time we're gone and so I'll just take this wire and it'll come across here and hook up just inside the control panel again. Speaking of filling while you're gone it does have an automatic shutoff setting. After it's filled for a prescribed period of time it kicks off and won't fill again for another 24 hour period. So if something you know really bad happens you know you, you spring a leak or the sensor malfunctions or something it's not going to keep filling and filling and filling and filling the whole time. Uh, you're gone on vacation or whatever, it will stop and then try again 24 hours later. So this evening, I've got to get power from our breaker panel and that's going to come off of this double breaker right here. I've got the panel de-energized. I've already flipped the breaker in our sub panel. So I've got this panel de-energized and it's going to come off of this one here. This other 15 amp is for the panel power. So we'll split this off and it'll come down through a piece of watertight conduit and go up into the box here. So let me go ahead and get that piece of conduit cut and then we'll make our connection. So I'm feeding my Romex up through the flexible conduit here, leaving myself plenty of room because I've got to get clear up to the neutral bar on this side. So I left myself plenty of room when I strip back the jacketing. There the jacketing is through and now I'm going to figure out how much I need to leave on the other end as well and then cut off the excess. One of the most frustrating things you can do with this is to forget to put this nut on when you're running your wiring because if you get all the way to the end you forget to put it on Guess what, you gotta take it loose so you can put it on. It's really annoying. All right, so we'll run our neutral wire over to the neutral bar. 
again, I've got this panel de-energized, so there's no chance of me getting shocked. And we'll bring it in right about here. I like to keep the panel pretty neat, so you'll see me kind of routing the wiring and making sure that everything's pretty straight and organized. So that one will go in right there. And then our hot, we got plenty of plenty of slack here for our hot lead. And it'll come over here and go up. And then come in right there. And then our ground just goes right there. So we got plenty of wire. Let me get these uh, cut and strip back and attached and then we'll work on the other end. I'm securing my ground wire now. I like to use a square drive when I'm doing these, when I'm working in a panel. Because these little screws, you know, they kind of have a slotted head in them that you could use a you know, regular straight blade screwdriver, but the square really indexes very well with these and you don't have to worry about stripping off the screw. So that's what I usually use. Of course, there's some exception. These are on the neutral bar, just standard uh, slotted screws. Try to keep it neat. Whatever you do, don't work in a hot panel. I did that once when I was young and stupid. Trying to hook something up when I was uh, in college. Something happened and I was working in the breaker box in our fraternity house. Shocked the crap out of myself. So don't do that. That's stupid. Unless you're a trained electrician wearing insulated gloves and using insulated tools and you don't have any other choice. For the average DIY, shut the panel off. All right, so we got everything hooked up on this end. We're ready to throw the breaker whenever we get the other end hooked up. So I'm making my connections in the box here. Pretty simple, just uh, stripping the wire back and putting everything together with wire nuts. Not complicated stuff. Just gotta follow the directions and make sure you follow the wiring diagram on the panel. If you do that, you can't go wrong. One thing I've always found with wire nuts is you need to make sure that the wires are really all secure in there. So I always give them a little tug after I thread the wire nut on because sometimes it'll fool you. It'll get threaded up on one of these pieces of solid and your little piece of stranded wire won't actually be hooked. You go to pull on it and it pops off. And you're like, oh crap. So that would have happened in the panel or in the uh, control panel here. You wouldn't have known what was going on. It'd be a real nuisance. All right, hook up our ground, drop the wire nut, and the power side of this is done. And then we're ready for hooking up the uh, sensor side and the valve control side. This ground on there. Just good and snug, not pulling out. And just kind of fold everything back up in here, out of the way, because you gotta get your little cover on here in just a minute. You gotta have room for this thing to go back up on there. Okay, so that's that. Now we'll hook up our sensor side. We've got two wires here, and those are these green ones that are already coming out. And then you got the two red wires. And those actually hook up to the, uh, get this out of here, it's wrapped around 
this little transformer wire here. So these are the ones that actually go to the sensor that's in the pool. So I'll make the connections there, and then we're ready to make the connections on the other end of the line here. And then we've got to go Velcro our sensor into the skimmer, and we're ready to test this thing out. All right, so we're putting the cover back on the high voltage compartment, as they call it here. High voltage compartment. Putting that back on, and then it's got a weatherproof cover that goes over the entire thing. This is a little O-ring gasket here. So this whole thing just slips right over top. Indexes that little gasket. And these little screws thread in there. Hold everything in place. It's really a nice setup. This is meant you know, for indoor or outdoor use. Clearly we're indoors here, but you can use it out uh, in a mount to the side of the pool house or the side of your house if all your equipment is sited next to your house or on a post or a piece of fence, whatever you got handy. So we just snug this down, not too tight, and we'll crack the cover. Tightens up later than you think because these screws are actually recessed back in there. You just kind of do it by feel. So don't break anything. Don't manhand it. Hold your screwdriver loosely. All right, that's that. All right, so now we're working in the skimmer. And what we've got to do is get an area cleaned up here where the sensor is going to mount. All right, so we got a nice clean spot down in here now. I got all the old residue off from the last piece of Velcro. Speaking of Velcro, this is what we're using. It's extreme outdoor Velcro. And it's uh, all weather, all surfaces. So it works really well for this type of thing. What you gotta do is um, obviously cut it to size so that it fits the back of your sensor. And this is the sensor, this is the sensor wire that we connected in the in the pool house and the velcro goes on the back here and these are the two sensor probes and until water contacts this that uh, fill system is filling and once water contacts these probes then it closes the circuit and the fill valve closes and the whole thing shuts off so pretty simple system other than a few little safety uh, controls and that sort of thing built into it so i've taken some rubbing alcohol and cleaned the back of this thing and clean the inside of the housing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut a piece of Velcro to size and we'll stick it in there. All right, so you can see we have the sensor wire kind of tucked in here and it actually goes out the back side of the skimmer here. And then our Velcro right down in here. Okay, so there you can see the uh, Velcro and we've got the probes about an inch up from where the water's sitting right now because I want the water a little bit higher than it is right now. And then let me turn this around. You can see where the wire goes out the back of the skimmer. There's actually a piece of conduit on the other side of that. And that holds the wire and takes it back to the pump house. So that's the setup. Next step is to go into the house and turn the water on to this three quarter inch water line. Once I get this thing charged, we'll be ready to go ahead and come over here and flip the breaker and that'll power this in the meantime i'm gonna go ahead and get the pool running it's been shut off for a while so i'm gonna go ahead and get it circulating and then i'll go in the house get the water turned on and i'll come back out here energize the system and we should be able to see the power light come on and then actually start seeing it filling there all right i just returned from the crawl space and i got water turned on in this three quarter inch line and so the next step is to come over here and put the breaker for our water control. Power's on, sensor's on. And 
give it a second here. And we're filling. Outstanding. Okay, so there you have it. Not a bad project. A uh, little bit more labor intensive if you're starting from scratch because you do have to put a little piece on your manifold there for your valve to hook to. You've got to run a water line. You've got to mount the control panel. So I, I had a couple of shortcuts here getting this thing hooked up and operational tonight since some of it was already done. But I hope that gives you a good idea of the operating principles of the Jandy water fill system. Uh, it's pretty slick. We really like it. It kept our pool topped off for us while we were on vacation last year and really all summer. We didn't have to worry about getting the garden hose out and filling it up. So it's a pretty nice system. If you have a, uh, if you're doing a renovation or if you're building a new pool, you can actually do it a little bit differently than what we did. Instead of putting it inside the skimmer, which is kind of a retrofit, you could actually create a standpipe in your pool house. And what that does is it takes the water level from your pool and basically carries it over to your pool house and then there's a vertical pipe that comes up off of that and the water will rise to a certain level in that vertical pipe and that's called a standpipe and you drop your sensor down inside that standpipe and so when the water comes up to the right level it shuts off drops turns on works just like that but you don't have to deal with moving it when you're trying to get your skimmer basket out uh, you don't have to deal with the water level, kind of the ebb and flow of the water level as it's coming into the skimmer. Sometimes that fools the sensor. So it's not a perfect setup in the sense in the skimmer. So if you're going to do a new build or you're going to uh, do a total renovation, you could do a standpipe in your pool house and that would take care of a couple of those issues. If you got any comments or questions about this Jandy system, please be sure to leave those down below. Thank you guys for hanging out for this episode. And be sure to hit that subscription button if you haven't already. Hit that little notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. And we'll see you guys again real soon.